It's Mrs. Roper, Charlotte. I've met many families whose ancestors were enslaved by my family. I've apologized only to one of those families because I don't think that words are enough. I don't think they answer for the wound. They're like a Band-Aid on the wound. Still, I want to say that I'm sorry for the suffering that my family caused your family so many years ago and for such a long time. And in saying that, I know that we haven't reached the end of the journey. We haven't even come to the middle. But we might have just put our feet up on the path and taken the first small steps toward understanding. I ask, I ask your forgiveness. So, Charlotte, what does it mean to you to have um, this apology? It's overwhelming. It's deep within. I'm full. I, I live with racism every day. To hear that doesn't I wash it away. But it says that someone recognizes what we go through when we walk out our doors. And it's all right, Shalom. Well. This is the brother Nahalia for the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim who are preaching this word and believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. This is Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. And it reads, be not deceived. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. All right. And I'm going to go into a lesson based on the video you just saw through the spirit of a descendant of a slave master. All right. Um, apologizing uh, to a um, so-called Negro woman. All right. Um, and through the spirit, we understand that. Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians and Haitians and their descendants that are scattered amongst all nations are the descendants of Israel. All right. The children of Israel. All right. Now, it was prophesied that we would go into captivity, but the Lord has also said, according to the judgment. All right. That what a man soweth, that shall he also reap. The Lord has also said that um, the Lord requires that which is past. All right. And and an apology will not suffice, all right? And uh, this is thus saith the Lord, all right? This is Revelation chapter 13 and verse nine. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints, all right? And the judgment has been written through the spirit and poverty how by Shemel Shai concerning Esau, Edom, all right? The Lord said that they will not be acquitted all right. They will find they have found no place of repentance. All right. And through the spirit and poverty, how about Shemel Shai, there will be no place of repentance for the nation of Esau Edom. All right. Which is the so-called white man as he is known today. All right. Now, let me grab this as well for edification uh, sake in Hebrews. This is Hebrews 12 and 16. And it reads, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. And what you have in these last days um, are Edomites, all right, who are trying to allow a apology to replace actual justice. And what do I mean by that through the spirit? Um, is when you look at the court system of Esau Edom, if a man murdered someone, right? If a man kidnapped someone, man or woman, if they go to the court and they're guilty of the crime, an apology does not um, get rid of the sentence against that evil work. They still, even if they're repentant 
of the uh, crime, they still have to face the punishment for the crime. Now, the reason this descendant of a slave owner could shake the hand of that so-called Negro woman is because they have the wealth. An apology is free. It costs you nothing. And that's why the Lord said he's not mocked because a lot of our people, because they have a Stockholm syndrome, which is a sympathy with their oppressors and their victimizers. All right. What they have done is they have they want to be accepted by their um, oppressors so much that they're willing to accept an apology instead of true justice. But the scriptures say the Lord is not a respecter of persons. And concerning Esau Edom, the Lord said there is no place of repentance, though they sought it carefully with tears. All right. And when you look at this descendant of a slave owner, he didn't even give them the dignity of, of giving them tears. In this makeshift apology. All right. And that's why through the spirit and poverty, how by Shemel Shah, we are comforted by the words of the Lord, man. All right. Matter of fact. Let's go to this. All right. This is Ecclesiastes 41 and 7. The children will complain of an ungodly father because they shall be reproached for his sake. And that's why they can make the complaint. But what they will not do is transfer the wealth. They will not transfer the wealth. All right. And that's why uh, the Lord is the most high judge. That's why the Lord is the one that executes equity between man and uh, between man and man and nation and nation. All right. By what? By allowing uh, what this world knows as karma, which is really judgment to play out in the earth. And how is that judgment playing out in the earth through the spirit? The Lord is beginning to bring down the kingdom of Esau, Edom. And an apology will not suffice the Lord, man. All right. As a matter of fact, let's go to this. There's Ecclesiastes 3. And I'm going to jump down to verse 16. No, I'll start at uh, 15. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And Yahweh Bashim Shai requireth that which is past. And, a, and an apology doesn't um, stop or stay the judgment that the Lord has proclaimed against Esau Edom, which is the so-called white man, as a nation of people. And that's what a lot of people forget. All right. We have borne the iniquities of our forefathers because we are our forefathers. The same thing that has happened to us being the descendants of our forefathers is going to happen to the so-called white man being the descendants of their forefathers. Meaning they're going to have to reap the judgment that the Lord has proclaimed concerning their nation. All right. This is uh, Isaiah 14. And I'll start at one. For Yahweh Bashim Shai will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob and the people shall take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids and they shall take them captives whose captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors. Now, when you understand this through the spirit, this is a future prophecy. Now, if they're going to rule over their oppressors, they're not talking about George Washington per se. Meaning we're not going to go dig up the bones of George Washington and put them in some building and say, look, we're ruling over our oppressors. No, those spirits are back on the earth today. And in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the Lord said there was no place of repentance found for Esau. And that's not just speaking of Esau being one person that's him as a nation of people just like the children of israel are commonly referred to in the scriptures as jacob even in isaiah 14 chapter the lord said he will have mercy on jacob he's not talking about the one individual jacob but the nation the same thing is going to play out for these uh these so-called white people which are edomites and the reason i want to highlight this is because our people are so uh, thirsty or um, desirous of the validation of the nations that have afflicted them, that they are willing to accept the low for acceptance of nations that hate them. 
And that's a symbol. That's a sign of um, low self-esteem as a nation of people. That you're willing to be degraded and not receive justice just to be accepted, partially accepted. All right. This week is one of those proving points, one of those subtle reminders that the Lord gives out to allow our people to, to remind our people. Of the current condition we're in as a nation of people. Those who have hope in Yahweh by Shemel Shai, we have comfort and joy in the spirit of the Lord because we understand that the Lord is going to avenge his saints. All right. As a matter of fact, let's go to that. And how is the Lord going to avenge his saints? He's going to render a recompense. A judgment is going to be cast against the so-called white man as a nation, not just one, not just a few, but them as a nation of people. The same way the curses blanket Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans, whithersoever we go is. The judgment is going to be the same way for the uh, nation of Edom, which is the so-called white man. All right. Now, let me go to this. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32. And I'm going to jump down to verse 43. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And the Lord is not going to accept the apology of the so-called white man for what he's done. He's going to render a recompense. That's what vengeance is about. It's a recompense. And that's why I start off with Galatians, the sixth chapter, the seventh verse. That quite simply put, what goes around comes back around. It's really that simple with the Lord. When you really look at it from the bird's eye view overall. In a general way, what goes around comes back around. And that's why the Lord counseled us as a nation through the law, statutes and commandments to love your brother as you love yourself, because the deeds that you do in this earth, they come back to you, whether it be a man or a nation. All right. Matter of fact, let me get that. Let me get this in Job. This is Job chapter 34 and 29. When he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hideth his face, who then can behold him, whether it be done against a nation or against a man only? So that shows you that the Lord renders recompense and judgment on men and nations. All right. And it's not just the elites of the nation, just like you Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. You didn't just have a few of us as a nation uh, go into captivity as a nation. We all are under captivity and these curses, one shape, form, or fashion, all right? And that's because when it comes to a nation, when the Lord judges a nation, he judges that nation as a whole. We enjoy the common curses of Israel, all right? But when the, uh, when the Messiah returns, beginning with the elect, beginning with the first fruits, the entire nation of Israel will enjoy the common wealth, all right? Now, Wisdom of Solomon 18 and 13 reads, whereas they would not, Salakia. This is uh, Wisdom of Solomon 18 and 11. The master and the servant were punished after one manner. And like as the king, so suffered the common person. All right. And this is going into, for context sake, this is going into the Lord's punishment against the Egyptians for not letting the Lord's people go. The Lord said that he punished the king and the common person of the Egyptians. And when you go through the account of the Egyptians, uh, the firstborn, including including cattle. Were uh, put to death. During the first Passover. And the Lord is making a point that he not only punished Pharaoh, but the common person of the nation of Egypt, which oppressed his people. And the same thing is going to happen to Esau Edom. All right. And I wanted to highlight this through the spirit uh, to bring out these points, but to also highlight um, that an apology will not be acceptable in the eyes of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. To sit on the stage in front of people and have people clap hands and cry tears as if an apology uh, is compensation for what has happened to us as a nation of people. 
that's not going to be sufficient for the Lord, man. Because as the scriptures say, the Lord is not a respecter of persons. And they whose judgment was not to drink the cup, which is us, the loved nation, the beloved nation of the Lord, as it is written, if we had to drink our cup and be punished because of our iniquity, then the same thing is going to happen to the so-called white man. And let me get that in. Uh, let me get that. All right, I'm going to get this in. Uh, in uh, Jeremiah. All right. This is Jeremiah 49 and 12. For thus saith Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. And art thou he that shall go altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. And what is that cup? That's that cup of captivity, uh, of captivity, excuse me, the cup of the Lord's wrath. He said, they, uh, as, as we have assuredly drunk in that cup, all right, the so-called white man has it in his mind that apologies are going to be sufficient and that he's going to, with his apology, not have to drink the cup or be punished for what they've done as a nation of people. And of a lot of our people who are so uh, desirous to be accepted by these other nations, even though the Lord has shown us through actions that these nations will never accept us unless we remain in a position of submission to them. But the Lord is making it very clear that they will be punished for what they've done. Regardless of what the so-called white man feels. And that's why I wanted to bring this out through the spirit, because it's a subtle reminder of how the so-called white man feels about you Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans and what he truly feels about justice. In his mind, as long as we acknowledge that we did something wrong to you and we apologize and shake hands with you, then it is compensation to the average Negro, Latino or Native American. When justice, when you really deal with justice and equity, it's not just apologizing. And Esau's court system shows you that. Murderers can apologize and be acquitted of murder. Not in the so-called white man's society. How much more so in Yahweh Bashim Shah's society when he's made it very clear that he who leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. All right. So Lord willing, this was edifying. I just want to bring this out and highlight this through the spirit. All right. With that, I want to give all praise, honor and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and the sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.